what, what the haters talking about. Supporters of NFL free agent quarterback Colin Kaepernick are planning a rally in front of the NFL headquarters in Manhattan on August 23rd. This is going to be very interesting. We're talking about thousands of people, including a few organizations like Justice League New York City and the Empowerment Movement. Now, Spike Lee tweeted out a flyer promoting the event on Tuesday. A lot of people thought that Spike Lee was actually putting on the event. He went on to say, hey, I'm not putting on the event, but I do support it. Big ups to Spike Lee. Now, here's the deal. A lot of people are saying, well, what's a protest going to do? They don't want him playing on their teams. Why y'all protesting? They don't want him to play. They have every right. It's not going to change anything. That's slave talk. And if you're not black, that's an oppressor talk. That's what oppressors do. They, they try to take away your hope, make you think you don't have any hope, make you think that you can't do anything to fight back, make you think that you have to lay down and accept things. If nothing else, that rally is going to hit them in the pocket and it's going to do some damage to their reputation. Now, some of y'all may think that, well, the NFL is so big, how can you hurt it? I mean, they got their own day of the week. How are you going to hurt the NFL? Well, you hurt them by unsubscribing. You hurt them by not watching. Fewer views mean fewer dollars. America is controlled by the almighty dollar. Let's keep it real. So if you pull back your money, people will pay attention. This is why the gays are so successful every time there is some type of movement. Every time somebody goes after the homosexual community or offends the homosexual community, they lose it. And usually they end up winning the fight. That's because they understand the power of numbers, both in people and income, dollars. Some people who scream, it ain't going to make no difference. These people going to do whatever they want to anyway. You can really just drop them back in the 1700s and they'll be a good slave because that's how them slaves sound. I'm a master, man, you, you gonna get us killed. But well, it ain't gonna make no difference what you do. It just ain't gonna make no difference. Now go on with that trouble, boy. He gonna get us killed. <laughs> oh, man. Boy, can you imagine the trouble that Nat Turner went through? Can you imagine what Martin Luther King and Malcolm and Sojourner Truth and Harriet, to all these people. Can you imagine the stuff that these people went through? Trying to get people to fight back, to stand up for their God-given dignity. People won't do it. I can guarantee you right now, if somebody made an announcement and said, look, in three days, that will be complete equality in America. And black people are going to be treated fairly. There will be no more gunning down unarmed black men, innocent black men. That will, we're going to stop this, the, the pipeline from schools to prisons. We're going to clean up the streets. Everybody going to have a fast shot. But 
We need black people to stop shopping for three days. Hell, it ain't got to be three days, it's 24 hours. You going to have fools out there saying, man, it ain't going to make no difference. It ain't going to make no Man, I ain't doing that, man. I got to have them new Jordans. They ain't going to make no kind of sacrifice, but they will eat off the sacrifices that others make. They'll be like, ain't nothing going to happen. You got to keep in mind, the people in the civil rights movement who gave their lives and risked everything, they had detractors that looked just like them. They had detractors that snitched on them, that told and got people killed. They gave, they had informants, they had infiltrators who gave the enemy uh, information to come in and thwart a lot of the progress that they were making. People got killed from uh, informants that look just like them, by informants giving up information that look just like them. So this, just like with the cops going crazy and killing black people and doing whatever they want to do and getting away with impunity, just like you had that 50 years ago, you had a bunch of these people with these slave minds, black people with slave minds. And let me tell you something, and you can get mad at me all you want, say whatever you want to say. The thing is, is that these same people, they probably ain't never stood up for nothing in their life. They ain't probably ain't never stood up for nothing in their whole life. They ain't gonna stand up for nothing for their kids. Now they'll fight just because, but they ain't gonna fight for a cause. They'll kill just because, but they ain't gonna kill for a cause. So it's funny when I hear these people talk and say it ain't gonna matter. It matters. Let me tell you why I know it matters. This is how you know when, if you're being oppressed, if somebody's violating your rights and stuff and they get angry about something that you do, if they get angry about an action, that's probably a good thing for you because they're happy when things don't benefit you and they're angry when things do benefit you. So if you have a certain segment of America that's mad about this rally, that means that it's a positive thing for black people. It's as simple as that. Because the only segment of America that's upset about this rally are people who intend to keep their foot on your neck. Keep you in line. Those are the only kind of people that's upset. Oh, and the black people who are cowards, who are sitting back saying, Ooh, you're going to make massa mad. You better get on out of here with that nonsense. I'm the only people mad. And let me tell you something. Unfollow me, I don't give a fuck. I don't want your ass on my platform, no way. I don't want your poison around me, no way. No way, so unfollow me quick, nigga. I don't give a fuck. Unfollow me. I'm gonna tell you what God loves and he loves the truth. We got a lot of uh, covert coons out there. We got a lot of them out there, man. And, they, and, and a lot of them come off as being tough and being hard. And they straight up cowards, straight up cowards. Ain't going to bust a grape. Ain't going to push a duck in the pond. And if they did, they jump in and save it. So I'm just telling you what it is, man, straight up. Protests come on all levels and all forms. One person may decide that they want to protest by attending a rally. Somebody may want to organize. Somebody may want to protest by giving their money to the cause. Somebody may protest by boycotting foods and uh, uh, products and services. There's all kind of ways to boycott. There's all kind of ways to protest. So anytime somebody stand up, I don't give a damn what it is. If you standing up, you fighting for anything, you doing an action. Any kind of action is better than being idle, doing nothing. I don't give a damn if you just rallying people and saying, man, fight the good fight. Whatever you're doing, it's better than doing nothing and sitting your ass around just complaining. I remember when the Million Man March happened, there were people 
in high positions that was very critical of the Million Man March. What's wrong with a million black men coming together and just, even if it was symbolic, even if it was just symbolic, what's wrong with them saying, you know what, I take the oath to become a better man or to do better for myself and my community and my family? What's wrong with that? How can you find any fault with that? But you know how some motherfuckers are. They're going to find fault with everything because they're not willing to do it. They're not willing to sacrifice. So if they see somebody else doing it, the first thing they're going to say something, they're going to come up with something negative to say about it. So I get it. And Boomer Asias, and I heard him talking today. He a hater. A lot of these dudes that's talking down on Kaepernick, they straight up hate, and they hate the fact that he's getting all the attention that he's getting. They're jealous, especially Ray Coon. Very, very jealous of the dude. Talking about the NFL looking at this thing like it's a negative thing. They're looking at it like it's bringing too much negativity. They want to sign it because it's bringing negativity. So let's get this straight. So fighting for equality and standing up against police brutality is negative. Oh, oh, because some people are offended because he wouldn't stand for the poor little flag. He wouldn't stand for the flag. So damn the fact that the reason why he wouldn't stand because of the lyrics in the national anthem and, and, and they were written by a slave owner. Damn that. Somebody who wanted black folks eradicated. Damn that. I wonder how many people out there how many Mexicans out there would stand for a flag if it said, kill Mexicans? How many white people would stand for a flag if that flag had words in there talking about kill white folks? Here's the deal. 70% of the players in the NFL are black. If those 70% players decided that they were going to boycott, they were not going to play damn taking a knee. They're not going to play until they get rid of the national anthem, that shit would be gone. Because this come down to money, man. You can say what you want to say. But you hit them in the pocket, that damn national anthem would be out of here. I can guarantee you that. Man, and what if the other 30% of the players joined them? It's a wrap. And you can't tell me nothing about, oh, they'll just get other players. And what if the other players did the same thing? They'd have no choice. Man, you got to stand for something, man. I ain't going to try to tell y'all what to do. But as for me and my household, we boycotting the NFL this season. Yeah, it ain't that big of a deal, man. It ain't nothing but football. I'm going for a greater cause. And this is bigger than Ka Colin Kaepernick. This is bigger than Colin. Colin was the, the spark that lit the flame. That's all it was. So we appreciate him for that, but we're going to take it from here. Believe that. The NFL needs to have one of those no more campaigns like they did for domestic violence. No more, I thought he was reaching for a gun. No more, stop resisting. No more, uh, he didn't comply. No more, I fear for my life. No more discrimination. No more racism. No more hate. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order,